Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck, and I'm going to do my wig clearing update for May 23rd, 2021. So, oh, okay. So I had a great weekend on my birthday weekend. If you guys saw my vlogs or my update last week, I did really well and I bought a lot of books. So my book haul for last weekend is up. I will still have a really big book haul at the end of the month. I'm just waiting for a couple books to come in. Um, that were the last ones I bought. Um, and I'm trying to curb my buying, but I'm already having trouble, which is hilarious. So we're going to see how um, I do on, I mean, I'm not going to do a book ban. I'm just trying to calm down <laughs> my buying. I mean, I think I'm going to do something that somebody recommended, I think last year, um, when I had Christmas money that I hadn't spent yet. And then to, to use that money for my pre-orders, so I think I was, that was where I had some gift cards or something. And so I think what I'm going to do is set up my spreadsheet so that all the pre-orders I have the rest of this year are with my birthday money that I still have left over. So I don't have money just hanging around to buy books. So maybe that'll help because I know that I've already spent that money. I don't know. I haven't come up with a good enough plan. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Because I do have quite a bit of money left still that I have set aside for my birthday that I got from my parents. They were very sweet. And, um but I didn't spend it <laughs> this, this week, but I spent money that I already had. So I'm not going to backdate anything I meant going forward. So, and as I said, I really don't need a whole lot more books because I have so many right now that I am having trouble because I want to read everything at the same time. Anyway, so I actually had a really good reading week. I did read a lot of short things. I finished up one book I've been working on all month. And then I read three short things that um, went pretty well. Um, yeah, I think, I don't think I finished anything. You know, I, I finished them kind of one midweek. I finished one Friday night and I finished one yesterday. So um, pretty proud of what I read. So let's get into, into that. So I finally finished Sea Room by Adam Nicholson. I think I finished this on Sunday. Did I finish this Sunday? I think it was Sunday. Um... If you saw my vlogs, you saw my moment of freak out when this crossed over with other stuff that I was reading, which was hilarious. Um, but Sea Room is a book about Adams. Um, his dad had bought in um, like the 19, I think the 1930s or 1920s, um, bought the um, the Shant Islands um, up in uh, northern Scotland by uh, just off of Lewis. So they're three little islands. Um, they're quite, I mean, they're acres, but there's, there's not much there, but rock and birds and, um, wind. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot there, but, um, so they've been, um, so the, the family's owned it for, for many years now and it passed to him on his 21st birthday. So he, this was written a few years before he was going to pass it to his, his son, who was going to be turning 21 in uh, a few years. So this is kind of his love letter to the islands of um, how, um, you know, like it talks about all the nature stuff. Like it talks about the uh, geology and it talks about um, weather and the, and um, the water and things around there. And the, and, cause it's in the mints, it's in the middle of this kind of uh, area, which is not always great for boating. <laughs> Um, and again, they have high winds up there in the north. It gets cold. It's pretty barren most of the time, except then again, it during the summer, a lot of seabirds come or birds that come like puffins and um, others that come just seasonally. So they come and then during the winter, they get geese. I think it was geese. Anyway, and then uh, it was like, it's just, they were, um, and then he's talking about his family and who lived there. And they talk about the history of who inhabited the island and then some archeology span stuff that they did on the island while he was there. He allowed um, some groups to come in and try to figure out, you know, what other settlements had been there. Cause there were remnants of things. It was really fascinating. It has like a little bit of everything of natural history kind of thing, I would say. And it also had his personal stories and um, things that he did there and and uh <laughs> just it was uh it was a fascinating read in that way it was a very slow read for me i admit it i was very much every time i read this if i read too much it would put me to sleep and it really it's not the writing it really was just because it was just so mellow like again i could only read a chapter at a time i had to i had to break it up that way to get it done but i really enjoyed it i'm glad i took a chance on this i bought this last year after 
uh, Springathon last year. And so this was my la my pick, one of my picks for Springathon. I just kind of carried over a little bit farther, which is fine. And I just wanted to get it done. So, um, and as I said, I was completely shocked that it turns out that he is the grandson of Vita Sackville West. And it was so hilarious to find the connection between this book and the books I've been reading about her. I just thought that was hilarious. Anyway, because uh, I did not, that, I had no idea until I got to um, the last chapter. I just, I was surprised. Anyway, so um, anyway, I really enjoy this. I don't think it's for everybody, but I also think that you can get a lot out of it. It's, it's just taking a look at these islands that are, you know, that nobody lives on them. People stay overnight there, like they have one little cabin that's left there, and it's not all that great, but so they can stay there, but nobody, like he's there for weeks at a time, but not all the time, and they have sheep that are transported to and from there, and that's pretty much what it's used for, is for sheep. And it's just, it's, I and mean, again, there's so much in here. It was just kind of, it's, it's pastoral. It's just kind of like, it's just talking about the islands and all the stuff around it. And I, I thought he did a really good job. So I'm glad I read that, even if it took me a little longer than I thought. And if I took a few extra naps. <laughs> so last weekend I had started Orlando by Virginia Woolf. I read this one for, um, the 1900 to 1950 readathon. I had read, um, uh, the Love Letters, um, Virgi uh, yeah, Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West, um, just before I finished that last week. Um, so I was, and Orlando is Virginia's take on Vita, and it was very, very interesting. So this is a weird book, and I don't think anybody's gonna <laughs> say that it's not, because it, it is weird. It's about uh, a young man in Elizabethan times, who somehow is able to live for hundreds of years and it's him traveling through that time and interacting with people and yet at some point changes from male to female and um it's it's a very the writing again her writing is beautiful in some places her descriptions of sceneries are just fantastic um but this is just weird <laughs> and i mean okay so my major criticism is, is something that I would, again, I, I write for fun when I haven't written recently, but when a lot of times when I write for fun, again, when I've been writing groups, I'm the person who will tell you your timeline is messed up. There's, that doesn't make sense. That's not going to, that doesn't work. You've missed something. And that's what I spent all the time in this book. Just going, that doesn't make sense. She can't, the character can't be that old after this many hundreds of years. You can't jump from this period to that period just like that and again you have to take it on a it's a whim it's a whimsical in that way in the way that time is kind of fluid and so is sexuality like i like i get all that it was just hard for me because it didn't make sense <laughs> on the timeline thing and that's just me being a scheduler being somebody who tracks things by time all the time and that's how i think in my head how i have to get things done and i have so much time and i'm a procrastinator so the point is I, I just think about time way too much, probably. And that's the thing. And I, but I also can, I mean, I, I let that go to read the story, but I still had issues with it even when I did let go. Because sometimes there'd be a line drop about how old they were, the main character. And I'd be like, Orlando, there's no way you were that old if you'd lived that long. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. So it was weird. I don't, I can see where parts of it where, um, that were based off of Vita and her family home and some of the things that that she was involved with and stuff. It was very interesting that way because I've kind of taken this deep dive into Vita Sackville West. And then, so Virginia Woolf was kind of part of that. So now, yeah, so I did want to, I'm glad I got to another one of hers. I hadn't read her in a couple of decades, I would say. I probably read the last ones in college. So I have got a couple more of her books to read that I will at some point try to pick up. I still want to read more of her. And I do want to go back and read um, A Room of One's Own. I just haven't read it in years. But, um, so I might do that for Nonfiction November or something. But again, this was weird. And I knew going in it would be from what other people had told me and what I'd seen. And I've never seen the movie. So it's not like I, I mean, I knew, like I knew what was going to happen because this is pretty well known. But I didn't know <laughs> what it was going to be like. I don't know. It was weird. So, but I'm glad I got that done. Um... Again, I read that for the 1900 to 1950, so I've 
<laughs> it was 1928, I believe that that was published. Sorry, I didn't, uh, I should have probably said that. I think it was, yeah, 1928, so. So then I, fin so I finished that, I must have finished that Thursday. Yeah. So I finished that Thursday. It took me, the week was hard because of, you know, after I had my Monday, you know, Friday and Monday off, I got back Tuesday and work was insane because I had like 130 emails. Maybe that's not a lot to some people, but to me, that's a lot when I have to go through and make sure everything was followed up on or done. And I'm about 40 of those emails were ones I had to deal with. Um, <laughs> like and it takes, you know, on certain things, everything else was more informational, but, oh, so I didn't really read. Orlando took me a little longer than I thought it was going to take me. But then on Thursday, I picked up Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. So this has been on my TBR, I think, for about four years. I'm not sure. I have to go back and find out. I was going to do that. And my computer was having issues yesterday, so I couldn't look back. I don't remember what year I bought this. I think I bought this in my first year of booktube off of somebody's recommendation. And that was my first Persephone book that I got. Um, I have... Um, I have like several of them, but I haven't, I haven't read. This is like, I think this is only the second one I've read. Maybe I've read three. I don't remember. I don't know. Anyway, I need to read more of them. So again, um, they're mostly classics that I've been forgotten. This is from uh, 1938. And this follows Miss Pettigrew, who is down on her luck. She is, um, she's uh, middle age, 40 and she's um, between jobs, she was a governor since she's not a very good one, she tells herself. But she's trying to get a job and she goes to her agency to try to get a, a job and, and the head person there goes, oh, I got one here, take it. And so she goes to this address and you know, she's all nervous about doing this and then she gets there, this young uh, woman opens the door and says, oh, thank goodness you're here. And then it just kind of starts a, a, a day that was, is like no other. And I really, really love this book. I, I knew that it was a book that could either hit me right or wrong. And I, it hit me right at the right time. I really enjoyed this. I had so much fun with this. It is not a perfect book. There are a few things. And there are a few things that are from that time period. Maybe a few little racist things that are said. Um about some other characters, which I was like, meh. But again, um, there, again, it was only a few small little lines. So if you can get past that, you know, definitely, I still think it's a really good book. It sh again, it shows uh, female friendships and it shows uh, trying to step out of your comfort zone when you, you're given the chance to. And I, she took chances and I think that was what was so good. And I just love the way that this went. I admit, I was just, oh, it was so, I just love the end. So this was fun. It was funny. It was sweet. It was also sad in um, their lives of showing what women went through and stuff. And I think it showed that so well on certain things. This is not a deep book. This is not like a deep dive into that stuff, but I think it scratches the surface just enough that you get a lot out of it. So um, I can see why some people may not get along with it because it is kind of, kind of, it, it is kind of hilarious, especially in the beginning. And uh, you're, because you're not quite sure where this is going, but I think it works over time and and establishes these characters pretty well. And I, I really love them. So I am so glad that I read this book. Again, I read this for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. So this was a surprise pick. I mean, it was one of those ones on my pile that I wanted to get to, but I wasn't sure I was going to. And I'm glad I just picked it up on a whim that day and uh, and, and started it. So, and then again, I read it, you know, with um, just a little bit over a day. So it was, it was really good. I really enjoyed that. I know that there... I think there's going to be a readathon on Kate Howe's channel and somebody else. I can't remember who the other person was. I just I just saw somebody else mention it. I actually haven't seen that, but I don't know. Maybe it was her book club. I don't know for sure. But so there, if you're looking forward to read it in June, <laughs> there are other people reading it. And I again, I highly recommend this. This was just fun. Like I said, it's not perfect and not everything, but it was just fun. I I really enjoyed my time reading that book. And then after that, I died and finished. I decided to pick up the book that I really wanted to pick up that I bought over this week, last weekend, which was Portrait of a Marriage, Venus Sackville West and Harold Nicholson by Nigel Nicholson. So this is a biography, autobiography on Vita Sackville West and her marriage to Harold Nicholson. So again, Vita Sackville West um, wrote All Passion Spent, The Edwardians, and several other um, poetry and other books. 
And again, I just read her letters to Virginia Woolf. And so I've been kind of, and I read All Passion Spent two weeks ago. So I've really taken this deep dive and want to know more about her because her life sounds fascinating, especially when in her 20s and uh, early 30s. So it just sounds great. And yes, Cooper is here to, <laughs> to be in my way. Um, so this was like a surprise. I knew going into this that, again, Nigel is, there, is the son of um, Vita and Harold. And so I knew he was going to you know, it's, it's about um, their marriage and talking about things that they went through. But it was really odd how not everything was scratched on. Like, there was just certain things that he touched on and not others. And it also turns out two of the five sections in here are actually Vita Sackville West's autobiography on what happened um, in 1918 to 1921. And so it was very interesting that um, I didn't expect to have her voice in this. And so that was really good for me. So this is not, I would not say this is a definitive um, biography on her in any way. This is very kind of more focused on the crisis in their marriage and um, and then the aftermath of that. And then maybe a little bit, I mean, it does kind of talk a little bit more about them later, but really not so much. I actually got parts after this section, this, because this, because again, this was, um, in, um, 1918 to 21 is kind of where it focuses. And then, but the, all the letters that I read from her from Virginia Woolf were from 22 on. So I got much more about those kind of things than I did in this book from that, even though he does touch on Virginia Woolf a little bit. And then, um, and another, one other, um, man that was, um, influential or in her life. It was, it's just not, wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it also it gave me more than I wanted because I got her voice in two of the sections talking about what happened with her um, love affair with a woman named Violet. And it was very, very interesting on um, how, it's how she explains things and then her son would, or uh, Nigel would go through and then he'd do the more factual part of it. And she, I mean, it, she was being pretty honest, but there's, there's a few little fudges, <laughs> but it was, um, again, it was fascinating. I do, I still am fascinated with Vita Sackville West. I don't know, um, what I'm going to go to next. If I'm going to, um, I know I have a couple more of her books coming in the mail, which are the ones I'm waiting for. Um, but I, um, I might need to get another biography that's a little bit more extensive. Um, I don't know. But I still think it was a good launching point for a biography on her, even though, again, it was from her son. And he, he's a, he is a scholar, like a, or he's written a lot of books about her and uh, Virginia Woolf and a few other people. So it's not like it was done badly. It's just, it's weird how it does focus on the crisis and then how they dealt with it. And then, again, they were married for over 40 years. And, uh, and so, and when the crisis happened, they'd only been married five. So it, you know, it shows the beginning part of the marriage and things that, you know, a lot of that stuff, but it, you know, it doesn't really tell about the many, many years in between and a lot of things that I read in the letters that are not in here. So there's I said, there's good and bad things about this, but I really enjoyed it overall for what it gave me, um, from her point of view as, as well as, um, from her son. So I, Overall, I still would recommend this as a book to start with. I still think I need another uh, biography on her. If anybody knows of one that I should focus on, that'd be nice. Uh, let me know. But I did. I'm, I am glad I bought this. I'm glad I, I got it. Because there is some really good excerpts from their diaries and from their letters between Harold and Vita. And so I do like a lot of that. And I did get more Harold in this, again, because he is highly involved. But it was like, it was, it just, I don't know. I just, it was very interesting that the tact that, that he took, uh, for the structure of that book. And again, I was not expecting the autobiography part, which was like a bonus. It was just great. I was so excited. So, um, I am only reading one thing, um, right this minute. Um, everything, well, I mean, I have a lot of in progress. I'll show you what that is in a minute. I am listening to Silver Spring by, uh, Rachel Carson. This, I have this on audio from my um, library. It's uh, narrated by Susie Bernays. So, um, I mean, it's, she's talking about the chemicals, like the DDT and stuff like this. So, because this was written in the 60s. Was it 62? 
I keep thinking that's what it was. But it's so fascinating on her talk of, um, I mean, nature, but also how humans are wrecking things and about how chemicals that we think will work for this thing won't, then all of a sudden will affect something else. And again, I was, I'm not very far. I'm only, I'm, I think I'm like 20% in. So, well, I mean, I'm 20, I think I'm 21% in. So I'm not super far. I was hoping, again, this is not a pick I picked for Springathon, but it's kind of a, another reaction. I just found it, uh, it was on my Libby app. So I just, I just got it. So we'll see. I didn't listen to it as much this week because my phone had issues in my car this week with playing the audiobook. So I don't know if my phone is starting to go or what, but I am listening to that. So I'm going to try to listen to that more this week and get more of that done. Um, the book I'm, I still have, um, Crow Country by Mark Crocker on the go. I just haven't picked it up since Monday. So I, maybe I'll get to it this week. I don't know. I mean, again, I, I'll get to it at some point. It's about crows, nature, nature in East, um, England, but I just haven't, just haven't got to it. I, I will get to it at some point. It's still on my currently reading. I will get to it. So, um, so this coming week, what I think I'm going to read. So first of all, I have a buddy read uh, for Magic Burns by Alona Andrews. This is book two in the Kate Daniels series. I'm continuing to read these with Tia at all and all the books. So we are starting today. Um, we have it tabbed out um, for the week um, for about, it's about 40 pages a day. So um, luckily this, this, <laughs> this book has, the chapters are much shorter. So I think like the first one, I think I, do, I get four chapters for 40 pages where in the last book we did two chapters and it was like 50 pages for two chapters. It was like, so it's like twice as many chapters, which is great. I like shorter chapters uh, and it just, um, but we broke that up. So um, anyway, we're going to start that today and um, do that. So again, um, this is an urban fantasy series where magic is... <sighs> It kind of fluctuates in the, where it's in, um, you know, a, a different uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And what happens is, is that the magic comes and goes. Some technology only works when the magic isn't there. And so everything has kind of like a backup system between technology and magic. And it's kind of interesting that way. And there are shifters and there are a different kind of vampire than I'm used to. And um, I'm not even sure what this one's about. She's kind of a mercenary, but she's now so... But it's continuing on from the first book, so I don't want to say how that ended. But I'm um, looking forward to, to trying this again. I read the first book back in like 2011, I think. And then I got all, I got like five or six of the books in the series and I just never read them. So um, Tia mentioned that she wanted to read this one, I think, in a video she did earlier this year. So I said, oh, I, I want to reread the first book, the, you know, um, Magic Bites. And so we read that last month in April. So, um, and then I said, after I finished, I go, okay, I have to tell myself that by the end of May, I have to read the second one so that I know if I want to keep the books or if I want to get rid of the series. So, you know, so we're going to read the second book <laughs> this week and we will see if I like this book better than the first book. Cause I did not enjoy the first book as much as, um, um, as much as I would have liked, um, again, it was the first book, um, their first book published as well as the first book in the series. So I'm kind of sure it had first book syndrome kind of thing. There was things that I didn't, um, I didn't like in the way that it was put together, but I'm hoping that book two is supposed to be pretty good and it's supposed to get, the series is supposed to get really good. So here we go. We're going to try <laughs> book number two to see if I want to continue. So that's the only thing I have to read. I have two big books that I have been putting off because again, I'm a procrastinator. I still haven't really picked up Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. I was doing this as a read along on Instagram. Everybody else is way ahead and finishing and they're all raving about how good it is. And I'm like, I read the first four chapters, I think, and I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> Five chapters. <clears throat> so I do want to give this another shot. I don't know if I'm going to, I might wait till the weekend, um, from Memorial Day weekend to really sit down and, uh, try to get through this. I probably, I, I, I don't expect to finish this in May. I'm going to be behind, but I also don't think I want to read this during the week. <laughs> I don't know yet. I think I just need to sit down for a long period of time to get started into it. And then I think once I get past, 
where you know, this beginning part, I just, I just haven't been able to make myself read this. And again, this is book three in the Barshetshire Chronicles. And um, I was supposed to read these all year. And this one's kind of making me go, maybe I just need to finish this one and then be done for, and read the other one some other time. So, cause they get bigger. <laughs> So this is just under 500 pages. So it's not like I can't read that. It's just, do I want to? I don't know. Um, I'm having kind of a crisis on Anthony Trollope. And I, I don't know if it's just because it's the beginning of the book. I don't know. I don't know. And I know a lot of people like this. I've never watched the adaptation. So it's not like that. Like that's messing me up. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to try to get to this by the weekend. What I think I'm going to read... <laughs> This, this week is um, the Ma Kiyoka Sisters by um, Jinichiro Ta Tanizaki. I think I'm going to read this, but I also don't know if I want to start this today. <laughs> this one's over 525, I think. Ooh, 550. <laughs> anyway, so this is uh, following uh, some sisters um, in Osaka, Japan in... Um, the I think it's like right before World War One, and then through the through that, and I think it's how they all handle things like that. It was first published. Oh, did I? I'll have to look that up. I it was first published. It says in Great Britain in 1958, but I thought it was sooner than that in Japan. Yeah, 43 to 48. So I was going to count this as 1900 to 1950 readathon as well. So maybe I'll get to this. I don't know. I really want to. I've had this on my shelf for a year and a half. I got this in a giveaway from Sarah at the Bookish Knitter. And I've been meaning to read it ever since. Again, I love Japanese literature, but this is one I have not gotten to. So I might try to pick this up sometime this week. I don't know. I don't know if I'll pick it up today. We'll see. Um, I do have um, a couple books in the like I might read instead. <laughs> so again, today I I have to read my forty pages in Magic Burns, but then I don't. I I have I'm going to my parents' house down um, in Lebanon uh, for the day. They have a lot of technology things I need my brother to help with, <laughs> and so we're going down there uh, just for the day. So I won't get a whole lot of reading until later this evening. But I, um, I'm kind of in a, you know, as I said, I've read a lot of, of, um, books from 1900 to 1950 recently or about that. So I don't know if I really want to read <laughs> the big book that I should. So I have, a the, um, sci-fi, um, The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis that I drew as the book I want to try this month, um, from my spinner wheel at my TBR. So I'm hoping to at least try that. I haven't got a chance to do that. I also have another 19 to 19, 1900 to 1950 book I would like to try, which is The Wolf of the Werewolf of Paris by Guy Endor. So I think this was 1933. So I might try that one if I still want to continue on with the readathon, although I should really read the Makioka Sisters if I do that. I also have two shorter or mass market books that one is to continue the Bridgerton series. Um, this is book seven. It's in his kiss. So this is following uh, Hyathan. Hyathan? I don't know how you say her name, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the, the youngest child. So I don't know. So I might read that. I might feel in that mood. I don't know. And then I also have the main event by Shelley Lawrenson, which is the first book in the Pride series, which again, I want to read these. Um, so that I have more background of what we read in the, <laughs> the Honey Badger series. So, um, I might pick up that. I'm not sure. I don't know what I feel like, cause I won't know until I get home. Um, I, you know, I might get my, I don't know. We'll see. It, 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 I won't get home until probably like four or five. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe, I don't know what time we'll really get home. So anyway, that's it. That's all. So I had a really great reading, uh, week overall, even when it was really busy at work. Um, just because with my vacation plus um, this weekend, I, I mean, Friday and Saturday, I read some, two really good books. I'm really glad I, I got those done, too. Um, yes, Cooper. Um, so I think that's it. Um, anyway, if you guys have read any of these books or of the ones I'm going to pick up this week, which one should I pick up? Let me know. Um, 
I think that's it. So I will, I think, the, oh, no, it's not it. I get to do my board. Okay, two seconds here. Let's do the board. Did I, what did I read? I read, I read classics, which is cool. So I read the, I read Sea Room, which was nonfiction. I read Orlando, which was a classic 1900 plus. And I read, also read uh, Miss Peregrew Lives for a Day, which is a classic 1900 plus. And I think that's it. Oh, no, I got two nonfiction. I did the biography autobiography. So, yay. I got a lot checked off this week. I mean, again, my board is a lot different this week than it has been. I have not done any series, which is probably why I was looking at doing those. I mean, I, mean, I will because I'll have magic burns later, but... I haven't, like, it's just been that kind of month with the readathons. Anyway, that's it. I have talked enough. And Cooper's being cuddly now, so he wants me to stop. So, <laughs> um, anyway, um, I hope you guys are picking up something good to read. Let me know, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.